In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can find the longest word in a JavaScript string. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to JavaScript Snippets, a series of tutorials where we're going to look at some of the important tasks that you need to do as a junior developer and brush up on your JavaScript coding skills. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe below to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any tutorial updates. Okay, so we're going to find out how you can determine what the longest word in a string is. And whilst it's not the most practical of examples, something that you probably wouldn't be doing on a day-to-day -day basis as a JavaScript developer, it is a good way to understand how some of the key concepts around working with strings. And it can also be a common question to be asked at an interview as well. So we have a string set up and just by looking at it you can see that the jumped word is the longest word in the string. But how can we use JavaScript to determine that? Well I'm going to show you just one way which is probably the most efficient and most sensible way of doing it. And what we're going to do is split our string up into an array and then sort it to find out what the largest word is. That is the string that's got the largest length. And we'll just return that from the top of our array and then print it to the console. So let's make a start. The first thing we need to do is split our string into an array. So I'm going to create a new variable and I'll just call it str array. And to split our string into an array of words, I'm just going to say str.split and then pass in a blank space which is the separator. And what you should find is if we log out str array to the console now is just an array of strings. So the key part of this problem is to actually sort this array now so that we get the largest string at the top of the array. So to do that, I'll create another variable just so we're keeping everything separate and I'll call that sorted string array. And all that will be equal to is the str array and I'm gonna call the sort function on there. And this function, as you can see from the descriptor, gives us uh, the option to pass in two variables into it and because they're, they're going to be both strings because we're dealing with strings right string arrays at the moment and so i'm going to just call the first one string a and the second one string b and i'm going to use a es6 arrow syntax here just to make it a little bit easier to read on the code that we're working with i just call that string a so with this function inside of sort we need to actually return a value so i'm actually going to say return uh string b so that's the second string and we'll access its length property. And I'm just going to take away the value of string A length. And what that will do is basically if the second string that's part of the function is larger than the first, the preceding one from it, it will actually move it up the array. And what we'll end up with is the largest items or the largest strings at the start of the array at the top of the array. So let's just log out sorted string array to the console. And as suspected, we've got jumped, which is the largest string at the top of the array. So if we wanted to just find out what the largest string is in the original str variable that we had at the top of the page, we can just access that first element in the array, which as we guessed right at the start of the tutorial is jumped. And of course, if you wanted to find out how long that string is as well, we can just access the length property of the string and it gets displayed in the console if we log it out. So of course we could wrap this in a function just to make it completely neat and reusable. And to use it all we need to do is just call uh, the longest word function that we've defined with our original string and we should get the same result back. Oh, I forgot to actually access the first value from there. Let's just return the first value from the array. And now we have the same effect as we had before it was put inside a function. And there are a few ways that you can make this function a little bit more efficient or a little bit cleaner to read, but I'll leave that to you to add your own personal style and work out how you'd like that function to look. So that's it for this tutorial. There is a link to the code below in the description. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and to get updates on new tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.